Hello and welcome back to the Cancelled Podcast. I'm going to hear that when I enter the gates of like purgatory. Do you think so? It just, there's something about the feeling of sitting down on this couch and knowing I am about to ruin my own life, you're about to ruin your own life, and anyone else that's collateral. Oh, it's scary. Someone just told me that the other day. They were like, no one's ever going to want to be around you because it's just scary. And I'm like, honestly, really good point. But it's like... And I'm starting hot. I'm starting out hot today. We are three episodes back to back to back of just like turmoil the whole way through. Yeah. We're going to need a guest soon just so people don't start We see your comments where people say like they don't want guest episodes as much. Like obviously some you enjoy, but like it's scary when it's just her and I because it's like we only have so much we can say without actually ruining our lives yeah it's like either y'all get a guest or i get a 51 50 hold and that's totally up to you guys in the comments below but hopefully you'll choose the latter um (laughs) with that being said what's going on so i just went to the jersey shore oh (laughs) for the first time ever in my life um no disrespect to the people of jersey shore I don't think I'll be attending again. You don't? Wait, why? I just, you, you, you get there and you see exactly why they shot that show there. Like, it is like so, so chaotic. I kept telling people, I was like, I'm from Vegas and like this city is scaring the shit out yeah. of me. Yeah. Like, it was just so fucking feral. I don't. How old were they when they all did that? Do you I, even I know? think in their 20s, I'm assuming. Oh, I'm like, maybe because they, they were young, but they had to have been of age. But it's also just a type of person like even just Jeff yeah. being there it like brought out this side of Jeff where I was like in another life you could have been like Vinny or like Polly D like wasn't he like Jeff was on yeah he had a like eight second feature on one episode and we'll never shut the fuck up about it and I, I just think it's iconic and I, I consider him a main, main character uh, so does he and we can unpack that Jersey trip more if you'd like in a little but I would like I was shooting an episode of Jeff FM there with Jeff and I receive the infamous FaceTime call from Chris Miles. It's like he knows when you're podcasting. He probably gets like a little ring in his ear. Bible, that man does not call me that often. At all. Like, at all. So at this point, it's become a bit where Chris FaceTimes me and I answer it on the podcast because usually what comes out of his mouth is just like very funny, He never starts with hello. It's always like a statement. Yes. And... Oh, my God. What does he say, Tanneroni? Well, it's just like, do I want to set it up a little bit as well? I should set it up. A set the bit. scene. Set the scene. Well, you know, actually, maybe I'll just say what he says and then we'll we'll backtrack and okay. I'll get to why I was so angry. All right. He says, Mod Sun and Sahara Ray are dating. Are dating. Wait, so dating is crazy because how long ha- it's, it hasn't been a week since you you were like kind of dating him right yeah (laughs) okay so okay i'm gonna backtrack now okay Okay. i'm actually i'm just gonna go like all the way back right start at the beginning i started dating mod son i don't know when the first time i i can't like pinpoint it but essentially 2020 right yeah maybe 2020 right when that pandemic hit he fuck i think i'm gonna shit myself well i Fuck. God, you're so important. You never cease to amaze me. Oh. Are you okay? I think talking about that gave me so much anxiety that my body That's immediately a, it's a had real to shit response. It out. Like it, that really just happened to me. Like my hands were just on the wall. I was just sweating. Like I had Palms to take, sweaty. Like pants off. Like I saw God. Oh. Anyways. Okay. <laughs> oh God. It's so funny too, because like he's gonna see this and he's well, gonna that- be like, that's why I want Sahara. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I know she shits too. Anyways, man. <laughs> I dated him for the first time in 2020. And I've never really like talked about this, but in the beginning of us dating, I kind of felt like, yes, we really liked each other and we fell in love over like a, a couple years of the whole like Bella situation, you know, like, mm-hmm. and I think that towards the end, you know, how we felt towards Bella almost kind of drove us together, which is kind of a trauma bond yeah. beginning, you know? And I, in the beginning, I very much underlyingly felt like he was, obviously he loved me 
and then the trauma bond was real and like you know we liked each other a lot but there was the underlying thing i think for him of like this is gonna piss off bella like there was a little yeah spite like it was like spiteful a little sprinkled bit sprinkled on that delicious yeah, maybe Sunday. it was like it was like just a bonus thing but like still a thing uh yes and I, obviously over time then we fell for each other and developed a real relationship and whatever and towards the end it was quite a tumultuous one on both sides um i you know i think i i mean I, again i was like 20 so i i don't think i was you know, he you were was being 33 20. and I wanted to be 20. Yeah. And it was like, you know, don't have an OnlyFans. Don't do this. Don't whatever. And like, I was very much like, I'm not ready for all this, you know, and we, we break up and he writes karma and various other terribly good kind of a slay, but mean songs about me. And he's one of the only breakups I've ever had where we just absolutely never talked again. We talked about this on cancel. Yeah. That was crazy. Cause we were close at the time and all of a sudden he just wasn't there anymore. Yeah. And we just did not talk. And I went and did my little thing. And I would say a couple weeks after we broke up, he was with Avril and it very much was giving like, it's always the person that they tell you not to worry about. Because, like, oh, they were working together while we were dating. Ooh. And so that definitely made me be like, oh, sick. So the whole time I feel like I'm that's always your bed. so scary. Like, when, like, guys go off to film movies or something, like, Brad Jelena or Brad Jelena. Yeah. That scares yeah. me. Like, I'm at home in your bed with your dogs and you're in the studio with Avril. And what were, what were you thinking that whole time, you know? So, it, yeah. and I felt like it was also, he definitely probably really enjoyed being like, I just broke up with you and now I'm with Avril Lavigne. Well, yeah, no As offense. anyone Like, would. we have to remove you from that situation. <laughs> Us I, iconic. I 100% say, and I couldn't deny it. But again, I felt like that, that was a little <clears throat> sprinkle of that on that Sunday for him as well. You yes. Know? And then they go off to date. They get engaged. I very much... <sighs> I always kind of felt like when they were dating, like if they ever broke up, Maude and I would talk again. Like I just felt it. But then mm-hmm. when they got engaged, I very much was like, okay, we can put that thought to rest. You know right. what I mean? Whatever. And then one lovely night, I am sitting at the house and a friend shows me a TMZ article of Avril with <gasps> not Mod. Definitely not Mod. I'm scared to say. <laughs> I'm going to leave him out of it, okay? There's, a, oh, there's okay, enough okay. characters you're right, here you're right. that we can just let him live for a week. Yeah, you know? Michael. Um, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> oh, <rah>. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I would say 72 hours after that article broke, I receive a text. Of course. Of a screenshot of what was... Mine and Maude's song when we were together. Mm, classic Mis- move. From Mr. Maud himself. To slide right back in. And is just, um, like, I think that night we had, like, a seven-hour phone call. And just, it's immediately, like, back into it, you know? And he's just yeah. like, I, I've right always where you left loved off. you, Tana Marie. You're my soul, blah, blah, blah. And I'm very much, like, just... It's funny to hear, you know, after, like you, karma's well, a bitch. I, you, are, yeah. Yeah, you hope I choke <clears throat> after and all die. of that. You hope get something you can't get rid of. He, a lyric in his song was that he hoped I got a lifelong STD <laughs> from someone after we broke up. Um, so then to hear him, like, I would just do anything to have you back. I was very much sitting there like, he, yeah. like he, he, <laughs> you know? Yes. And so then we <clears throat> keep talking and thankfully at the time, he was on tour. Like, I was so grateful for that because I was like, you would be over at my house immediately. Yeah. And, and this is going to give me a couple weeks to like process. Ease back into it. Process that, you know. Think about it. And eventually he comes back and he's in the middle of moving houses. So he doesn't, he's like homeless. And I'm like, I love this vulnerable state that you're in. Oh, you, you need a bed? Come <laughs> over. Um, and mm-hmm. we just start hanging out a lot. And it's just like we're grocery shopping and we're 
I'm helping him house vibes. hunt and then he's helping me house hunt and then we're wearing each other's clothes. It's like, it's like literally like that three years of time just never happened. Yeah. Just right back where you left and off. And eventually we have this conversation where I'm like, listen, I, you, you like to love and you like to bomb. <laughs> and I am now much more emotionally mature that I am aware of this. I think the first time we started dating within a week, he like bought me a piano. And I was like, oh my God, this man just... It's literally right there. Right there. Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, he just loves me. And looking back, it was like, I, Maude was really what taught me. Like, I remember Googling like That was, was your happening. first experience with love bombing? Yeah, in our relationship being like, oh, okay. Am I, am I being love bombed by a narcissist? Like, you know, like... Yeah, hey. I feel like you're finally getting to the point where you're like, okay, that's just not yeah. sustainable. So I had a conversation with him where I was like, listen, I don't want this... I, you know, if, if you mean all these things you say, then you can take the time to cherish this. I also don't really want to be by your side on tour while you're singing songs about Avril and while you're releasing an album about Avril. And I get it. That's your journey. You have to do that, you know? It is too, but they were also in such a public relationship that it's almost just a bad look too. You don't want to yeah, be like, like I, I just the rebound, like the back to his ex. Kind yeah, of like thing. I just, exactly. So I was like, we can keep hanging out, whatever. But it definitely gets to the point where he and bless his heart and we had a lot of conversations about this where he's like I'm a very very jealous person and that's why we would fight when we dated and that's what scares me about being with you and I'm I'm very much like listen you know if I'm dating someone I am I will be loyal to you I was loyal to you like I treated you amazing but if you're gonna hate a caption of my TikTok or a story I tell on my podcast yeah like or that I go out to an event and Chris is there and we're friends mm -hmm. and you know if you're gonna hate all these intricacies of my life then I'm probably not the person for you, you right. know? And then he comes correct. And it's like, you're right. I'm so sorry. I, I love you and you're right. And I have a lot of growing to do and I want therapy and I want to be with you and blah, 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 correct. blah, blah, You know, he goes on tour to Europe. He invites me. Oh, this little hair is just terrible. Hold. Extend. Hey, Maude. <laughs> um... He invites me to Europe to go on tour with him and is like, come to Paris. Like, I want to re yeah, where you got engaged. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to rewrite how I feel about <clears throat> this city. I love you. I miss you calling me every day from this tour. And I'm like, I no. And thankfully, I was very busy. And good couldn't. for you. I would have been on the first flight. No, thankfully, I was very, very busy. Uh, because had I not been I would have been and now I don't know where we would be and so I go to Turks on my birthday trip and he's like trying to see if he can make it on the last day or so like wants to be there we're FaceTiming the whole time this was last week yeah we're FaceTiming the whole time in Turks like whole I remember he called you at midnight called me at midnight sent me this loving paragraph sends me flowers in Turks I'm oh, going oh I to, forgot I'm First of all, getting flowers. We were just, I still have tan lines from Turks. Like, this like, is not long enough. Getting flowers to Turks and Caicos when you're in, like, Sicily is the hardest possible fucking thing to yeah, do Yeah, there was a lot like, of coordinating behind the scenes that was happening. He sends me these flowers. And these are these are some budge flowers, too. Like, I was like, ooh, like, ooh. thanks, Maude. I was a little excited. Their girlfriend flowers? Dear Tanini, <gasps> may all the twists and turns in life always lead us to each other. It's not living if it's not with you. Love, Mod Son. In parentheses, idiot. Because I had just yelled at him for, you know, being jealous and whatever. Right. Blah, blah, blah. That's the, la the last line is like our song. Like we've always said we'd get married to that song by the 1975. Blah, 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 blah. I cry. I call him. I'm like, I really love you. This was so sweet. This was so thoughtful. Da, 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 da. He's like about to go on stage and perform some show. And he's like telling them like, hold the show. I don't care. I want to talk to her. Like da, 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 da. Cute as fuck. Is texting me like... I want to see you the second you get home. Do you want me to pick you up from the airport? And we and I said this on last. I've episode. heard that line before. Exactly. And don't say it if you don't. You know, whatever. at all. I can't wait to get to that. And so, I'm texting him the whole day. I'm going home. He's like, safe flight. Like, I'll see you later. Whatever. I land. Nothing. Ghost. Obviously, someone else picked me up from there. Rat. Three or four more days go by, and he's texting me, and he's being like. I want to hang out with you. I want to see you. Like, what are you doing? And then I'll be like, oh, I'm just at home chilling. Just finished a podcast. Nothing. Next day. Sorry, I fell asleep. No, you didn't. I know the type. No, and it's didn't. so frustrating. You did not fall asleep. 
And it just, this keeps happening now for a couple of days where our texts just suck. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, it's, it's like every eight hours and they're short texts. And finally, I literally just text him and I'm like, what the fuck is the point of this? Like, yeah, three texts a day is just not like what, like I'm, and just, I'm wasting thumb time. Seriously. So much fucking thumb time. And it's like, just all of this like you're gone on the first story you miss me so much you come home we're like playing and, and house. you guys like, actually do have the opportunity now to see each other and yeah and, and now we're both in LA and it's like so like I, I was just very much like all of this for what you know what I mean yes and he essentially just says what he had just said a couple weeks prior like I hate the things that you do and that you post so it's been off-putting yeah so was he he was mad about like what the other guy picking you up from the airport or whatever I guess yeah but like you could have picked me. You you didn't know that that was happening. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Right. He could. Yeah. You're right. It it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. And it, like, not what, even- you weren't there. Who was gonna drive me home? Because <laughs> it couldn't be an Uber, obviously. No. Um. But it, but it's just this whole deeper thing. Like, just like I hate everything you do, essentially. So I just annotate the text i'm very confused because it's like we just had this conversation a week prior you apologize you said i was right you annotated his text yeah just God, you're up. brilliant suck my dick oh i thought uh. you meant like you literally went in and like like made notes on it oh no but that's hilarious no i don't have notes because i've said it all before yeah and we just had this conversation you just apologize and you send me these fucking elaborate flowers and turks with this you might as well be a marriage proposal of a note on the goddamn flowers and what changed between like, last week and now all yeah, of a sudden like absolutely. you're still and i just don't like the emotional wishy-washy roller coaster of it all and i've also said you know like if we you've been official with me before and mm-hmm. when we were official I wasn't tweeting and posting things that you hated really occasionally you would just be dramatically mad over shit but like you know that I know how to be a great girlfriend that you clearly loved so much so if right now we're in this talking stage and you want girlfriend behavior for me then man the fuck up send more than three texts a day if he wants you to be I'm not gonna give you something when you're not reciprocating that so on and so forth so essentially I take that text as like we're done because where are we gonna go from here until you either want to accept me and get so much therapy that you need for so many things because when was the last time you were literally ever single ever be- oh my god <laughs> and <laughs> hey amari um where he are we does, gonna go from I, here? it's so scary when people like literally can't spend one second by themselves mm-hmm. and like i like mod but that's like it is like it has to be a major personal issue and th- that everything you do derives from the enjoyment of spite from yeah, the like previous it's almost situation. like he's getting like really high on this like and it's like you're 36 all the time like you're 36 and like i don't want to play this cat and mouse game for the rest of my life i don't want to have worry that one day i'm gonna marry you and then we divorce and then tomorrow he's with <laughs> sorry <that's- laughs> Too i'm on go yeah of course the fuck I am. Yeah, um, that it is. It, yeah, it's just um, scary because it's like you lose him how you get him. Like he's if he's always out for this like weird revenge, it's like he's obviously yes. going to do it to you. So as you know, I have not been dating Chris Miles for a very long time. We hang out and we are friends and I know, I know, I know, I know. But I'm saying in the time that I was with uh, Vegas Boy and, you know, taken for a while. Right. Chris was dating this girl, Sahara Ray. And even when Chris, even when Chris started dating Sahara, I received 150 texts that day from every single person in L.A. Like, what the fuck is going on? Because I was friends with her. I didn't really care. I think they were better friends than her yeah. and I were and like honestly it was a couple that made sense to me mm-hmm. and I was very much looking at that with the mindset of like if they're happy I'm happy yeah but obviously because Chris Good and I were you. both You're taken if Chris and I obviously because Chris and I were both taken we really couldn't hang out or be friends or whatever mm-hmm. and then they break up Chris and I decide to implore the idea of a potential friendship again which we've talked about and it, before. It's tough. It is. And it is a tough journey that I am still terribly navigating. But the, I'm just telling the truth. That is. That's what happened. Yeah. And so after Maude sends me this whole fuck you text, essentially, Chris was having like a party at his house that night. And I was like, what do I have to lo-? like? You know, and even yeah, like even if I was talking fun. to Maude, I still probably would have went. I'm just friends with Chris and like those are all my friends and I love to see them. Like, you know. Right. However, I go and 
again, had I been talking to him, I probably wouldn't have posted being there. Maybe. Which maybe is a bad thing to say. Not because I have anything to hide, but just because I think it would have started Yeah, well, because if you know it's going to upset, yeah. Yeah. And I go, and I get there. And you post it. And I, and I, I drink a widow. Ooh. And I, I drink and in my widow drunk brain. Oh, that it'd be a really yeah. good idea to make a TikTok with Chris. <laughs> oh, boy. And boy, did you. <laughs> Since has been deleted. I've made more sense that won't be deleted. But I was so worried about you this morning. I'm like, I do. We need to have somebody else in that account. (laughs) A conservator. I've been a little rogue on TikTok lately and maybe I'll chill. Maybe I won't. Who fucking knows? But day by day. Never really have, you know, never really have chilled on TikTok. Anyway, you post a TikTok. Obviously, Maud sees it. And maybe Sahara sees it. Oh, perhaps. Yeah. And I go to the Jersey Shore. And I'm shooting an episode of Jeff FM, and Chris calls me. Maud's son and Sahara Ray are on a date at a concert together. Public as fuck. Which, to me, gives, I'm trying to rub it in your face. Think about the amount of texts I got with Chris and Sahara. Maud and Sahara. Like, I've, I've yeah, received because three texts now about it's it today. Just, it seems so deliberate. Like, they like were, a they, calculated attack on Tana Mojo. They went, yeah. Like just uh, such a calculated attack, and it's uh, and that's there's no such thing as a coincidence like that. That is, and she's too- fun, and he's fun. I'm sure they're having fun. I'm not. I don't think they're sitting there over dinner just talking about me. But I think in maybe, yeah, you gave him the idea for sure. I know in Mod's head, he's like Tana fucking hates this, and I love that. I don't know if in Sahara's head she thinks Chris hates this. I don't. I don't know her well enough to know that. You know what I mean? I do. Um, I've never met her. I'm like, she knows. They go to some Fall Out Boy concert, and that night I received 10 texts from 10 different people at the concert of photos of them. I personally like, sent you some. I didn't take them. There. <laughs> I didn't take them. Um, really? See, that, that's, and they, they're just full force with it on Instagram stories, like baby, baby, honey, kissy, whatever. I'm like, see, I didn't want to believe it. Okay, I was like, there's no way. Because I think highly of Maude, you know. I, I always talk about how I like him. Yeah, but you devil's advocate for that man a little too hard. A 36! Little, yeah, no, I, I listen, I'm changing my and changing my stat, or, like stance. I ran into him the other day at Benny Blanco's. And mm. in he comes with Sahara Ray hand in hand. I look at him and I do this. She, she can fully see me. I'm going. And he walks right over to me. And he's like saying, he's like, she wouldn't tell me this, by the way, until this podcast. So I hope you guys know well, I'm like clenching my I asshole. I hope you know right it's, now. it's anticlimactic because it's like not that much happened. But I was, I told him, I was like, come on, like, what are you like? You know, you're doing this on purpose. And he was like, you know what? I just have to see all these videos of Tana running around town with 10 different guys. Like, I'm not doing anything wrong. And I was like, I mean, but if that's your response as to why you are in your new relationship, Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and again, it's just like why I, her? I'm not if, your if girlfriend. That's, if that's the case, yeah, maybe move on and step outside of like your guys' thing, but don't go straight to your ex's ex. That's a that's an attack, in my opinion. If we were the same age, like if Chris pulled some shit like that, or you'd be like, anyone, okay, like. Because you're young, you're in the L.A. scene, you're, you do dumb shit in your 20s. Like, your brain is so fully fucking formed. Yeah, but at 36, you should be trying to actually settle down with somebody and it's not going to be somebody that you're using for revenge. Like, find a wife. Well, that, I mean, he tried. Mm, sorry. My bingo card in the past two months is just fucking full of shit that I thought would never fucking Happen. You should have seen me in the Jersey Shore. I was doing backflips. I didn't even know how to physically process that that was like a real thing happening. Like, that is really I can crazy. only, just to anyone else who wants to fuck me over, can you give it 30 days? Yeah. Because I think you I'm going to be in a straight jacket. Yeah. It's a lot at once. I feel like, I don't know, but what, so, so now, now what with the Sahara and Sahar, Sahara? Sahara. Sahara and Maude are they like to actively together I from to my knowledge and if they're happy then so be it and this really you're so big I'm you're you guys are stupid I don't like, mean stop. that yeah <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding I, this is nothing against Sahara by the way like I just want to say that like like 
I wear her swimwear. We'll comment on a photo now and again. Like, I'm not saying we're going to, you know, go get our nails done together. But she's but pro- I mean, she's probably pissed, too. She's like, Chris is back with his ex. Yeah. It just, that's it, what I'm I mean, saying. This just has from every angle. It does honestly make sense. Like, I, you know what I mean? It like, is like a full math problem. Like, everybody's doing their part perfectly. Yeah, that's all I have for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in. No, no. Ser- I don't know. I would be infuriated, but I almost feel like you shouldn't even give him the attention because he so badly wants a rise out of you that we're, like, we're doing I'm exactly... I'm not furious. Oh. I'm more, like, I am. shocked. Like, a, like, Is it shocking, though? Like, he, he's given you every reason to believe he would do exactly that. I still, for some reason, this feels like a new... Height. new level yeah like just the chris of it all the like just it's it is crazy you think it can't get worse and then it does every fucking time that's oh life. boy but it does um i definitely don't want to be with someone who moves like that and i hope one day we can be friends but also we've never been good at yeah, that he's a so. great guy but i don't think you should end up with him at all it's not and i living hope if it's not I with hope you Tana, to god he that says. he finds somebody maybe in her 30s that is ready to settle down that has no connection to his past that can also just help someone unpack being a man child at 36 okay it is a lot to be with somebody who why am i teaching you to grocery shop i why am i i'm like all people yeah it's probably good for you maybe i thought that at the time three weeks ago (laughs) not anymore (laughs) oh fucking hell um yeah so i hung out with Chris last night are trash and that is we are exactly just friends, what you're again, about to get into. To, uh, contrary to everyone, we are not running anything back. We are just friends. Who do what? Slay. <laughs> Who's who slay? Okay. Uh, you know what? Um, I think that that's horrible. Yeah. It just, but imagine also like, being Chris and I in this situation, no one else can fully relate to that yeah, and like laugh and about yeah, it. Yeah, you can have at least a few days, but then you have to get back on your on your grind and, and be a normal person and, and cut him off. I'm so sorry. I know. But we have to. You were doing so well and honest to God, I feel like you're just a better person all around when he's not in your life. Love you, Chris. Sorry. Yeah, well, I'm just, I mean, I like... I can sit here and podcast and be funny and fun, but I think it's very obvious to everyone. I'm like, I'm, I'm in a pretty dark place right yeah, now. Like I'm, I'm just going through it. Like it just, I can, I feel like I haven't been able to just like catch a little break in a while. So yeah, it shows. Life just keeps getting thrown at you. Yeah. But that will end. It will pass and we will be good. We need to go on a little retreat. Maybe we go to Wyoming or something. Chris Miles just texted me where to hose at. He has to know. He is like, he has he, to he's know like on the balcony probably. Like, ha- like how? It is really strange. I think men are horrible and I'll tell you why. I'm so excited. I want to talk about the text I received from you this morning. Oh my. And I need to go back and really reread that because I was not in a good place. So I talked last week about Mr. Flaky Flake, the guy who like, I didn't know if he like ended things with me. Confirmed. Um, never talk to me again after that little AI, like weirdo PR response text. that he sent me. Yeah. Okay. And so I was like, I, I just was like, you know what? Move on. Whatever. I'm hesitant to even say it. Cause I don't want the man to think that I've like, would ever like dream of him. But I did have a dream about him last night. Okay. Okay. I had a dream that he hooked up with one of my friends and I woke up like upset about it this morning. I get a screenshot from Tana. Because him, I am not a Mindy. Him asking Tana to go to coffee this morning. Hi, I see you're in New York. Are you going to this event? I left New York. Tragic. Aren't you Brookie's ex-BF love is so what I'm I So I didn't love that part because he isn't my ex-boyfriend. So then I don't give a fuck. I know, but it. I just feel like that kind of implies that like I said he was my boyfriend. But like the way that he was acting. No, you slayed you. otherwise. Keep going. You're already a little shy for getting at me for like years. And then I don't want it. And then getting at you. And then it's like... <sighs> And interesting. Yeah. And well, sorry, I don't mean to, like, no, I don't mean like he's like my scraps. It just uh, no. Well, that's that's. You know. I already I confronted him about that. Not confronted him, but like I spoke to him about that in the very beginning because I was like, first of all, I think you're too young for me. Second of all, I don't like the fact that you like actively pursued my best friend before me. Like that obviously that's gonna make me like feel weird. Yeah. Like, and he had such good like reassuring answers for both things. So I was like, whatever, i will move past it. Now a week after you send me this literal like horrible horrible like text to end the situation you're gonna text my best friend and ask her to coffee it's so he goes i don't know if i'd go that far 
but also I'm here alone. So if you were here, can we not get coffee? Yeah, no, here's And the thing. I, I sent back a bullet point list. One, not in New York. Two, you got at me for a long time and then slid in on Brooke and were with her. Three, I supported that. Four, you broke up with her with a PR response, LMAO. Five, love you long time as a friend, but there's no need to get coffee, yes, too. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and believe he actually just was like, oh, like we're both in New York. Let's get coffee. And I'm going to believe that for my own little like pea brain. And I th- I could see that. But also just like, but, why? why? But I, I texted him and I was like, hey, not not that I had any problem really with your text. I just like I want I don't want him to think I care so much about this situation. Yeah. It really I, like I said last week, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. But I texted him and I was like, hey, sorry about that. Like. I wouldn't I would just wouldn't have said anything at all you know what I mean and so he was like I'm sorry you felt that way about the text and he like went into detail I guess well actually no he didn't go into any detail detail he alluded to like this situation that is the reason he had to do it and whatever and I I just was like I don't know if you waste months of my time and you end the whole thing with like a little paragraph I'm like you have no respect for me at all which I hate mod son (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but like my nose is so red sometimes this happens to me so I look and terrible. and this is the kick of it all he i send it to him and he goes why don't we get coffee <laughs> no the fuck that's yes, not I what that swear. stupid Tana motherfucker Mojo, said. i swear on my life he said no the fuck no no no, no i have to show you the exact has text anyone you're gonna die. ever met a man with a the, fucking brain no the audacity Sorry. no literally i, I said i said just woke up to the tana screenshots and for the record i wouldn't have let her say that i hope you know that <laughs> and he said I'm like, he said ha 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 it's all good but hey why don't we get coffee my jaw was on the ground he said, so I can explain what's going on in person. I think things will make more sense. Are yada, these yada. Men? Okay. Just walking around with little walnuts Listen rattling. Listen to me. You already told me in not so many words that you do not want to talk to me anymore. And now you want me to sit across from you at a little coffee table and let you say it to me in more detail. Like, I don't need to know. Like, I mean, you should have done it to begin with, but now it's too late. So I just was like, okay, like, don't do that. Dude, and then it, it, I got like one of these. Like, oh I, I don't want to show the screen, but it was just like this like whole long thing, elaborate thing that is just not true. Like men lie and that's it. Dude, I I just want to put this out here really quickly. Just one sentence. I am a fucking idiot. Okay? Pea brain rattling around up here like a fucking maraca. But men floor me to the point that it makes me feel like albert fucking einstein that's the thing that's so frustrating i think that's why i like got so angry about the situation today because at first i wasn't even that mad and the more i thought about it i was like god he must think i am such an idiot and that's what's frustrating to me about it because i'm like i don't believe anything that you're saying but it's like just the nerve of it all like the nerve first of all ghosting 101 is supposed to include like you're supposed to include all the people around them for at least like a month like and like well i'm gonna go get coffee with you in New imagine York City. you just like like he hasn't spoken to me and you just like imagine, go get coffee with imagine him. imagine you like oh, tana what are you doing oh, i'm a coffee with oh Oh my god! I didn't even think about it because I I don't even like I couldn't imagine you actually doing it. Because like, I wouldn't because what the f- I just and it's like I like again I didn't even like the situation wasn't that big to me but it's like you wasted my time. I hate when someone wastes my time. That's also and I, just again respect. I hate when somebody can't just be honest about a situation. Tell me you're not into me because I know that that's it. Like I know that that is the answer. So don't tell me about all these things that happen and the reasons we can't talk anymore. I don't care. Also, you got like you guys aren't texting and to like actively ask your best friend to Who coffee. you actively pursued before me. It really is the problem that L.A. is just so grimy like that, that we we normalize it so much. But the other day I was talking to Deborah, my mother, and she was like, I don't care if like it if y'all have to go to the fucking moon yeah. to find someone I think we said that, that has no... Oh, did we? Yeah, we um, said it in the in the last episode. And, but and I is, really, like, I agree with that now. It is, but it's it's hard because we... we at I'd least rather, I kind of keep trying to date in these, like, same... I'll meet someone who knows this person and knows this person. Yeah. I'm kind of, like, mod sunning, honestly. <laughs> but... Mod sunning I just need crazy. to, like, outsource. Like, I need to get a regular... Like, Hunter told me, stop dating the talent. And I was like, 
so true. It is so true. But then maybe it's just men because all fucking men are. So, mm. But no, honestly, because every time that I have ever been in a relationship with someone who isn't the talent, it usually ends far less tumultuously. I'm. It's going to be my new word. I already hear it on the Reddit true. threads. I'm learning right now. I don't want to fuck this up because I'm still learning. Okay. And I want you to learn about it as well. But I think I sent you a couple TikToks about this limerence concept. What's that? It's like being obsessed with somebody and it's unreciprocated. It's like really common in people with childhood trauma, but like you. Because it's the only on, love you've like ever known. Yeah. Because you cling on to these relationships where like people like it's kind of a night like a whole thing you made up in your head. And like they're really giving you like not that much and you're creating like this whole story of it. And I feel like that's something I do all the time. And I can never be happy really in like a like fully mutual relationship where I feel like somebody's like genuinely interested in me. And that's my problem. I feel like I've I have changed that. I used to be a lot more like that. Chris was the last person where I was like, okay, I can't do this. Like I do appreciate the chivalry of it all. And I do want to be with someone who wants to be with me. And equally. I tried it like my last relationship my last like real relationship I I was like I didn't like him at first and I was like oh but he's so nice he's so talented he's so, so amazing I'm gonna give him a chance and I was like pulling teeth for the first few dates and then we know how that story ends so the, the so, concept really just is that everyone I fucking think it's just sucks. everyone's horrible yeah I don't know I think I need to stop dating for a second I agree I'm that's where I'm at I have a date tonight but you amaze me. <laughs> How many dates have you gone on this week? Be honest. You don't I have can't, to answer. I can't answer that on this podcast, but be, it, I'm sure people can infer that because I can't answer that. It is. You know what? I need to find out who Mr. Flaky Flakes best friend is. Okay. See, see but then, then we're just. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. God right. damn. Okay. I'm, I'm worse than the people. You guys are like on a cycle. Because a few weeks ago, you were like, Oh, we need like two dates a week. I know. <laughs> yeah, and then I but then I tried. But then I tried it. Remember, I did two dates in a day, and both yeah. of them just blew it. I or I blew speaking, it. Well, I might be the problem. It's very, very possible that I'm the problem. I can say the same about myself, and I think self awareness is important. Um, First step. I have a little update. Okay. Oh, sure. speaking of dates. We talked about that hinge guy that did all that weird shit and like showed up where I was and like whatever. Scary monster. (laughs) After we uploaded (laughs) that podcast. This is how I know he's mentally. Wait. Oh, no, that's not even what I'm going to say. I received a surplus of intel from other people who have had similar experiences. Okay. Okay. And I upload that podcast and I did text him my bad after that podcast and was just like, how are you? Because I was like, oh, I don't want you to see this and like end your own life. But I I realized that 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 was like not a, do you understand where my intent there was? Yeah. Like I was just trying to be like, hey, hope you're good. You know, Mm -hmm. like, sorry, essentially saying, sorry, I aired you the fuck out. But then he responded and I was like, I'm not doing this again. You, You terrify me like whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, after receiving the surplus of people saying that they've had similar experiences with him, he texts me 73 times. I don't answer. And he sends me this voice memo. Is it fucked up? No, I don't. I wouldn't play it, but say what he said. I don't think we should put his voice in the podcast. Essentially saying like, I'm, I'm really sorry you felt that's how our date went. And I, I I hate hate it when somebody tells me they're sorry. I feel some way. I know you should be sorry that you gunned me down, Ted Bundy. You showed up at the club (laughs) at 2 a.m. with a suitcase. And then sends me a novella series. Okay, he's a writer. I understand that you don't owe me anything and vice versa. It's disappointing that you chose to dump paint all over me on the internet. Beautiful metaphor. I like that metaphor. And now people are coming after me, blah, blah, blah. All this shit. But essentially ends it with like, if you'd like to hang out again. That's what blows my mind. You just told me this downstairs and I'm like, I cannot imagine watching a podcast where somebody talks about me for literally 20 minutes straight and says like, honestly, pretty like horrible things. Yes. True, and then being like, OK, things, I hope I see you again. <laughs> like you should hate me if you were, were sane. Like and especially if you felt like. You or were- he should have done some like serious self-reflection and been like, maybe I should ease up a bit. Yeah. Like I just. Yeah. Like that is 
insane. But like more power to him. He is persistent. Block me. Block you. Yeah, I don't. I just that's that's really it. Let's see what else we've got going on. I feel like he's like a method actor. Oh Maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's playing the part. Maybe. I can see it. I just have the most random story to tell you that I forgot about. I actually have a couple of those. Okay. And they're all just about my insane, stupid behavior. Um, Love those stories. I was at a party the other day. And a couple weeks ago. But I see Christine Quinn from Selling Sunset. Love her. And I love her. I love someone who says, I'm going to play the fucking villain. I'm going to stir the fucking pot. And I'm going to get my fucking bag. And I'm going to be an icon about it. As long as they're a good person in real life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not and we're not villain. like close friends. You know, but when we see each other, we just... We have the same energy. Like, we're not going to walk up and be like, oh, my God, you look stunning. How are you? We're going to be like, do you well, do you see what the fuck's going on over here? Like, well, like, yeah. you know, whatever. And I go up to her and we're talking for a second and I make a joke and I am fully joking because I did entirely watch the new season, you know, but I was like, the new Selling Sunset is fucking ass without you. Like, you carried. You ca you'll always carry. I miss you on it. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, these bitches could never. Right. And she turns to me and she's with her friends. They're they're the new season. They're the new cast of Selling Sunset. I just told no. them all their fucking show sucks. That is in mortifying. Front of them. I've done that before where I straight up sh I shit on like, oh my god, like right in front of somebody and it's it I top honestly two most embarrassing moments of my entire life. I just want to clarify like the new season is good. I was just joking, but you can't recover from that at all. What are you supposed to say like kidding how did you not notice were you drunk and i wasn't drunk i just was looking at christine right like i wasn't like looking at who she was with i just assumed she was with that's her friends. hilarious i just thought i'd share that can i also tell you a crazy story from turks that i'm i don't know if i should put on the podcast but i am so excited for you to tell the story we we finished last week's episode literally two and a half hours long and we were so upset that we forgot this story and i can't believe i'm saying this shit on the internet and i'm sitting here for the first half of this podcast saying like i don't know why these men treat me like this i don't know why these things happen to me because i do but i won't even say i do things like this you know I, it's more so that, this I, was like that I, I willingly admit things like this on the internet yeah in my entire life in my 25 years of life i would put this at the number one, if not top three, most disgusting, terrible, feral, Tana actions I've ever. ever, ever committed. And every time I think about it, I pray to God I die. <laughs> I pray to God. It was, I'm going to say it. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad as you just being a nice friend. Have you ever well, seen? Well, because I didn't, I didn't have to be there. Had I had to be there. I would have probably flown home from Turks by myself. Have you ever seen those memes where it's like, it just be two dumb bitches sitting there talking to each other, just saying, exactly. Oh, is that us? <laughs> so I feel like I've been so brain dead this episode. I feel bad, but I don't, it's like, I'm trying to be sober. I am so hesitant to tell this story because I, I sincerely get think that, to it. But every story I've ever told on the internet, every story time ever combined, I think this is the one where it's like, don't say that about yourself. But I feel like it. the ship has sailed and they love that about you. And I'm never going to find love. So I hope you people are fucking happy with this story. No, someone's going to love you regardless. I wouldn't love me regardless. You lost me for a day, uh, at least. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I feel like there will forever be a little Vegas in me. A little feral. Feral, but also like before I had the life I have now, I was very much... Word to Jay Wow on Jersey Shore, you can stay and get your ass beat or you can stay and get your ass beat. I, and I do still believe this. I think there are certain situations in life where you could save countless hours of breath and just solve it by decking someone in the face. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm following. Um, Trust. And that could be a completely wrong opinion and I'm not trying to project that onto other people and I don't do that. I now will refrain from that. But unfortunately... In this particular situation... That girl will always... Jump out a little. Be somewhere inside of me, you know? Yeah, she's And I would say that 
in the last seven years, eight years, whatever of my life, I've only let the Vegas in me show maybe four times. Most of which, if I'm, you know, fighting with a guy, like a Chris or like, I'm a, you know. I'm thinking of the like, you're a guy, you're a guy, you're a guy yes, story. Yes. Um, and there was a point during a lot of this drama in Turks where a lot of other people were jumping in with their sides and I was seeing so much red that I was kind of like, if you have something to say, then fight me. Seeing red for sure. And especially people telling me I was, not that I can't be wrong, but in this situation I knew I wasn't. So anyone trying to jump in and be, be in defense of really yeah, anyone was else. was in, yeah, trust me. I, I was a victim. You know, yeah. Depending it, on how you look on it, uh, yeah. Uh, and you know when like your period is over, but like it's not like, oh my God. You know, I'm a free bleeder. Free bleed till it's like over. Like the final, like not even not the final always. day, like the last day. Like there could be like a drop or two of blood, but like, sorry, Aaron, seriously, this is, you don't want to hear this about me. Um, this is a really extreme story. There can be a drop or two of blood, but if you're chilling, you're chilling. You, you don't need to put in a tampon for a drop or two of blood, you know? Yeah. Have you ever been on that day? And you were like yelling so hard or you, you <laughs> sneeze so hard or you do something so hard that you kind of like push out what's left. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? For the sake of the story, I will say that I, I have. It, it could be, you could come so hard. Okay. I don't, it's just something. <laughs> yeah. Just, you never know. Like maybe you get, maybe you got like a. And so I was yelling very, very hard while sitting on and that's an understatement boy I was she just, like smoke you know she was swinging and i was on <laughs> i was being held back by a couple people um and there was white bedding i was yelling on a white bed and i don't even notice this i'm seeing way too much red to notice any other red you know eventually this brawl leaves the bed and i and you have a snail trail <laughs> 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 and Kyla notices that <clears throat> I might need a tampon. You do? <laughs> what a sweetheart. And so I very much so, I was a runner and a track star in this because people, people kept trying to stop me from living my journey so i would just bolt <laughs> <laughs> it was she was everywhere my girl was on the go like at what like the bedroom that i may or may not have snail trailed on was like on the uh, <laughs> i'm pretty sure i saw her jump from balcony to balcony yeah like on the upstairs <laughs> floor and i ran as fast as i could down the beach because i had an issue with something someone said and i was on the beach and i'm yelling hard and i also have a really big issue this is also very Jersey Shore of me, very Vegas of me, that if you're, like, let's say you and me are yelling at each other right now, right? And if we're yelling oh. at each other from this distance and we're chatting, okay, we're yelling. And that's fine. It can stay there. Not all yelling has to resort to hitting, okay? But the second someone goes like this in your face, like like a, a hand like this or hands like this up in your Do face, not clapping chop at me. in your face, hands. When, when hands start moving close to my face, that sets off a fun little lever that says you want to fucking fight. Mm -hmm. I'm getting mad thinking about it. Oh my God. It really, if you do this, so I start doing it back to the person. I'm, I'm going back to the moment because I was looking at it like, oh no. Like, especially someone who's wrong and I'm already fucking mad and they're hitting me with the, this. The and, chop. The and, chop is. And not even a this at a distance. Like it was probably in. this close to my face. So then I, I grabbed some hands and I said, if you want to do this, then we're going to go to this. So let's discuss if that's going to be our journey. Right. Right. And we're, we're just, we're. Meanwhile, you are passing an egg. <laughs> <laughs> and so, li sweet little Kyla. And it's funny because Kyla's such a mom. Like, shit, like, this does not phase her at all. And I mean it. Like, the next morning, she's like, I had so much fun with you, T. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, she's hit so me. Funny. Like, I felt very bad for the people who weren't involving themselves and weren't involved. You, do you know what I mean? Like, if you're involving yourself, you want to be... I'm like, who wasn't involved, honestly? Like, Kyla didn't involve oh, herself. good point. Paige I, didn't involve herself. So true. As I am hitting this hand motion back. 
seconds from an attempted swing, I think is where I was at. I feel a little tap on my shoulder and it is sweet little Kyla. Warm Her timing is impeccable. Saying, I think you might need this with a tampon. That is too funny. And I am at such a specific point of this argument (laughs) (laughs) that we were on the beach and the walk back to the house was really far. Just too long. And I didn't want to lose my place. In in, in your argument. In my argument. I, I was very adamant on the fact that this was going to be settled. However, it may be settled right then and there, especially because this was... With other parties, it wasn't even the yeah, it the wasn't main even event. the culprit. Yeah, and it was like, you know. So I remove my hand like this, and I grab the tampon from Kyla, what and I walk. Do? I would say w- one foot, maybe two foot, two feet. How many steps you think? Two, probably eight. Steps. Oh, that's a lot of steps. If it takes you eight steps to get two feet, we have a serious <laughs> problem. I don't fucking know. You know, like, I, like just from where not I'm far s- enough for this to be OK. Like from where I'm sitting to like that window is probably like how far I walked down to the beach. And I dig a little hole like a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know this part. <laughs> And I'm still yelling while I'm doing this. <laughs> and I pop a squat. And I shove the tampon in my pussy and walk right back over and, and resume. resume my fight. What did she do? Or wait. I don't think she saw. I, I, to I be on the receiving saw. end, like what was it? Just like a blip and it was just over? What do you mean? No, like, it was quick. She, she didn't notice your... I was so quick. It was just like a walk, 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 dig, 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 shove, <sighs> walk, walk, walk. That is <laughs> for, honestly impressive. Although perhaps littering. I eventually relocated <laughs> okay. said applicator. Okay. To all of the Turks Beach police. Okay. I, I relocated. Hate to be that girl. I just know no, we no, did no, get no, in a no, scandal no, no, about no. that before. 100%. And I'm not a litterer. I'm a lot of things, clearly. <laughs> I don't, I, again, I don't think the person that I was arguing with saw. I, I know that Kyla saw. <laughs> the trauma. She's had enough. And I know you do not have to shame me for this because I know that that might be one of my life's lowest moments. To me, so you are telling me the story now and I knew the story. I was expecting it to get worse than it did. What That's, do you it's pretty mean? Bad. It's pretty bad, but like I feel like I've done stuff like that. Well, Ty, I, you're my soulmate. <laughs> Ty and I were discussing that there is, and nothing makes this okay. I just want to say it is my lowest, most disgusting moment. But thank God I didn't have a tampon in, because then what would have happened? Would it, would it have just shot out? Or no, something? no, like yeah, oh, like have where, you would I had, where would I have put it? Oh. See, that was when I initially heard the story. I think that's what I thought. I thought you like took one out on the beach. But I can't guarantee that I have a friend who did that. I have a friend. This is a true story. I have. This will make you feel better. A friend who was going to hook up with a guy, had a tampon in, took it out, put it under his bed, hooked up with him, never went back for it. He he found that one guy rip out your tampon with his teeth. No. (laughs) What? Crazy. No. No, I have not. It, it, Some people like want to do that. I think it's so weird. I'm like vampires. Just kidding. That this is the worst conversation. I don't think I've, I've ever gotten there on the internet. I can factually say this is my least. I'm trying to think if I have anything like really gross I've done like that, but I don't. I I've never I'm done anything perfect. like that in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done anything like that in my entire life, and I I probably hopefully never will again. I don't think it was that bad. I really don't think it was that bad. It's it's bad, but it's like you have to have done things grosser than that. I think I could name some things that you've done that are grosser than that. I would love to hear. No, I get shamed for it. I will just say the beach was a very far walk from the house at the time. It was far. It was pretty long. It was a long little little. Pathway. And I just. There wasn't an option because you couldn't have gone back. It wouldn't have been the same. You would have lost your momentum. It and to be fair, um, after... 
I put the tampon in. We did resolve the issue and there were no physicalities. And that was good. We, Nobody got hit. No one got hit. No one got hit. By the grace of everyone else there. And I think that... Yeah, there were people working, put in work to make sure no one got hit. Abby Weatherington was so funny about it. She was like, if you're going to hit someone, you have to hit me too. And I was like, okay, bitch, let's go. And she was like, Tan, are you fucking serious? Yeah, you were seeing red for sure. I tried to just step away from it because it, I don't think it was really my... Yeah, I haven't been I haven't, I haven't been that angry in probably like maybe my whole life. You probably needed to get it out. I have like some moments like that where all of a sudden I just have to get all my anger out at once. I'm just I'm not really that angry. Like even just like we we're talking about this mod situation. Like I I'm just I, usually I can laugh things off. I don't have a lot of anger. Usually I get you know I'm I was just talking to you about my emotional dysregulation. Anger is really not a part of it. It's just like it's either like so overwhelmingly happy or like so sad. I never get like mad. Actually, hmm. I just lied for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else is on the docket. Logan Paul got engaged. It was beautiful. I'm hyper fixated on the video right now. I've watched it. Honestly, when I was like upset about this little coffee shop situation this morning, I watched it like three times and I was like, okay, if it's not that, I don't want it. Logan Paul did not take anyone else to a coffee shop. They're so cute. And like so perfect for it. She's so perfect for him. And mm -hmm. like just seeing someone like know immediately about someone like that is just like so heartwarming. And the video's just done so well. I know. Like, I was hesitant. I didn't want to watch it at first because I was like, ah, oh, something's like just off to me about vlogging your engagement. That's what Paige was saying. And I was, I can understand that if it's not what you do for a living. Yeah, like, that's true. He, he like, that's his thing. It's yeah, like, and like, it's like getting engaged on a reality show or something. Like, it's like you're, ar you're already doing it. And, like, yes, he had his moments back in the day where it's like, what's up, Mavericks? You know, but over time, he really did transition into, like, his videos are, like, literal short films. Yeah, like, he's very um, tasteful, I feel like, about it now. And it's not ever really him. It's kind of like um, an outsider looking in. Yeah. Um, I love that video so much. I can't get over it. It is beautiful. And she is beautiful. She's God. just the most amazing, sweet human being. Like, I love that. So, I like, know. I'll I'm never, not kidding. I'll I watched the video. Nina Agdal. Like, I just Me neither. But about... I was doing bicep curls today. I swear to God. I was like, uh, like, I got to do something. I saw her arms. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> she looks amazing. Trisha Paytas's response to Colleen Ballinger's apology. Fuck Colleen. Oh, my God. Like, I, when we were laughing about it, la like, the, on the last episode, I kept saying I didn't really like know enough. I know. I don't know. I think it was after our episode or after we filmed our episode when all the Trisha st stuff started happening. But I was distraught because I love Trisha. Who the fuck does that to someone? Colleen. Miranda sings. If I found out like you did that to me. Yeah. Like, imagine I was like just like sending your like nudes to some random person being like, I just don't even want to say the thing she was saying. But like, Ew. Ew, 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 ew. And especially ew, like someone you collaborate with and like work with. Was like, she not scared? Imagine like Jeff if I did that knew, to me. If I knew that I had ever had an interaction with that or like that about somebody, don't get into business with that person. Don't like, don't be friends with that person. Like, and just, she, did she not have like guilt? Did she not have like impending doom? Like eventually she's going to find out about this? I would. Clearly I can do a lot of things that aren't good, but I could never in a million years imagine myself doing that. When I was younger, I would do things like online and stuff that were like probably horrible. But, but, and also just, yeah, you're a grown ass <laughs> woman. You're sending that to your young but she fans. Was, yeah, like, she was so much older than is like excusable for something like that. Like, I, I think older not that than there's I any, am right Not now. that there's any age that it is excusable, but like. Like maybe oh, a 14 year old. If she was like 12 like or something, I'd be like, okay, like she didn't know better. But like, what? Like she was older than I am right now no doing that. Yes, I think so. Yeah, because she's like 30 something and this wasn't like. Like Trisha's only had an OnlyFans for like so long. I just feel for Trisha. It makes me sad. I want her to know she does have like a friend and you or me or I the other people. I love her like, I just, so much. And I feel like she can't catch a break. She's always getting dragged and, do you and know, stuff even when she's not. Do like, you know that they were starting a podcast together? Yeah, that's why I said getting into business with somebody. Like, Because I, I saw that and I thought that they had already started it. I thought for some reason that they... They'd filmed like four episodes, I think. And we're posting together <laughs> as this shit came out. Like, I, if I was Trisha, I would kill her. Me too. But I feel like Trisha's grown. She's busy. She's being a mother and she's being a healed individual. And everybody, oh my God, it makes me so upset. <laughs> I'm like, as another highly emotional person, leave her alone. Yeah. Fuck Colleen Justice Ballinger. for Trisha. 
fuck Colleen. I actually need to unfollow her. So it's been my new thing, like unfollowing you people live. Follow her. I just forgot. I never followed her, Trisha. I was on um, Escape the Night with Colleen, and we like shot shit. Together I always see clips shit. of that. You should do more acting. That's fun. I was so terrible at it. No, we you're good a at it. You, for that. you just take yourself so seriously. Like I remember when you did the Bad Baby video, and you were like so, like you wanted yourself to be. You kept saying you were bad. I just shot a commercial for um, something like two days ago. Um, and they were having me act and I'm, I'm, I really am terrible at acting. No, I think that you just like, I don't know. I, think- I, I overthink it so much that I make myself bad and I, I can recognize that, but it's like, even like this script was written for me. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It was like, I was playing myself. It is so hard for me to like say something that I wouldn't say. And I yeah. lose, I like literally lose all like inflection to my voice. Like the line could literally be like, I want to have a beer. And I would be like, I want to have a beer. Like I like. Yeah. Do even- you ever get a brand deal that's like that? And you're like, come on. Like I would never say that. Yeah, I can't. And so usually now, like even yet, like when I shot that, they were very gracious to allow me to improv. But I think that's also because they were like, oh, she's gonna be really terrible if not. I'm excited um, to see it. It's it's interesting for sure. Do you know about the Black Mirror billboard? No. Have you seen this new season of Black Mirror? No. Okay. Can I tell you about it? Mm-hmm. There was an episode. And in my opinion, I think it's the best one on the season. And it's called Joan is Awful. And um, Was that foreshadowing? What do you mean? Joan is Awful. Joan. Oh. <laughs> Joan is Awful. I'm like, justice for Jonah's girlfriend. And it's about this woman named Joan. <laughs> and um, she's, she's living her life. And you can kind of infer that she's not maybe the best person. She is people's boss and she's firing people really cruelly and then you find out she's cheating on her boyfriend and so on and so forth right Mm -hmm. and she comes home to her boyfriend and they sit down to watch a show on netflix and they're looking through and the number one trending show is a show called joan is awful and they're kind of making jokes like that's so weird like i'm joan like you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. as if you were to see like brooke is awful you'd be like what is that i would love that yeah but then they notice and so she the main character is Salma Hayek in the show. That they're, like not it's like Joan isn't Salma Hayek, but Joan is what like oh, she's on Netflix. Watching, she yeah. sees that Salma Hayek is playing Joan yes. and Joan is awful. And she has very distinct hair. Like she has black hair with like blonde front money pieces and shit. And it's Salma Hayek with like her exact hair. And then her boyfriend's like, that's so weird. Like, why is it Salma Hayek with like your hair? And it's called Joan is awful. Like, should we watch it? And they put on the show and it's her life. Like she, it, it's Salma Hayek playing her, but like Salma Hayek like is firing someone that day identically to how she did. And then like Joan went to therapy that day and everything she told her therapist, Salma Hayek is yes. saying. And all the characters' names are the same. Like Joan in the show, her boyfriend's name is the same name as right. in real life. And then her boyfriend starts being like, is this play about us? You know what I mean? Essentially. Yeah. And then finds out that she's cheating on him and she's just, Oh, cause out. it's in the show. Yes. And I would have been like, that part's not real. Like, and she's trying to do that, but he's like, why is this every, like it's the same house. Like it's the same everything. You know what I mean? And then she doesn't understand what's happening and he like leaves and then episodes keep coming out. So then the next day an episode comes out and it's of him like leaving her. And like, it's like her life is just this show that's actively airing in it. It gets a lot crazier and it ends really crazy and whatever, but the conclusion of this alternate reality in, in this episode is that when she signed up for Netflix, she accepted the terms of agreement. Like, you know how you do that? Like when yeah. you make an account on something, you press like, I accept to the like terms and conditions. Right. And you like obviously don't read them. And in the terms and conditions, it was like, if we ever wanted to use your name and likeness and make an AI version of you a show like we can and like she accepted that you know and so she's reaping all these negative benefits of that's a terrible sentence terrible grammar sorry um all these negative things are happening to her now like she gets fired from her job her man leaves her because it's like everyone knows it's about her she loses all of her friends like so on and so forth anyways has a very very crazy ending incredible episode of Black Mirror right Mm -hmm. and so Black Mirror in real life does this thing on Twitter where they're like, you can make your own graphic that's like, I could make one. Like I upload a selfie and it can say Tana is awful. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like it's this thing 
You you get what I'm saying. You can yes. make them for your friends. It's something our friend group would do. Like just yeah. like you'd use this little meme generator to make like a Brooke is awful, Tana's awful, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh huh. And with that generator, there was a terms of agreement that everyone had to click. And then all over the world, Netflix placed these real billboards of real people who did that that say like Mark is awful, like with their face. And oh my God. And the, and the people. Who? thinks of this like imagine black your mirror. brain functioning that way black mirror like that's it's the most black mirror shit i've ever like, seen that's so amazing but it's like how do they how, like one episode of black mirror i'm like god that's mind-blowing and then for them to just like be able to do it over and over again i'm like who's writing that it's so fucking and, and imagine like imagine oh like natalie god. made that and then she's in Times square and it just says natalie is awful that's, like, and I wish and, that happened. I wish I used it. Yeah, there's people like us who want but that. But like random people who just like did it to be funny and like now they're like shitty coworkers on a billboard somewhere. Like that. Yeah, how crazy is that? Yeah, like imagine we, we made one. It's like this. Oh. Whose name is Mochi? It's like a whole bunch of people. Like isn't that fucking crazy? Oh my God, I want to make one of you and put it on Instagram. <laughs> But what a crazy publicity stunt. Which is so smart. Like promotion for that episode. Because why the fuck would you read the terms of agreement? Crazy. I don't know. Just thought I'd share. It's been blowing my mind. That like, I've is, told like 10 people. No, that is really amazing. I have to watch it. But now I feel like I know what happens. No, you should watch Because the ending's crazy. Michael Sarah's in it too. Oh, yeah, I forgot sexy, about that. Sexy, yeah. sexy, sexy. He's my biggest crush. Speaking of like sexy, sexy actors that are untraditionally sexy like Mike, michael sarah could rail me i do agree with that you know who else i always wanted to rail me <laughs> jonah hill i did too and i'm really disappointed in him for context jonah hill's dating this girl and i guess they break up and she goes on an instagram story expose as one does i get how that could happen i I'd never do it, but I could see how that would happen. Um, <clears throat> and she posts a screenshot of her texts from Jonah. And he says, plain and simple, if you need surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in unstable places from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee fucked. or something respectful. Um, I am not the right partner for you. If these things ha bring you happiness, I support it. Blah, blah, blah. Those are my boundaries. Those are my boundaries. Essentially, that's a text from Mod Um I was just going to say that, but then I was like, I think we've gone a little too hard. And now there's this giant debate on the internet. It's kind of hard because it is like, of course, you do want to have your boundaries in a relationship. It's like us saying a guy can't shouldn't be liking like Instagram baddies, like photos. Yeah. So that's like it's a similar situation. But... It's kind of hard because like in this situation, for example, he was sliding up on all her stories where she's like in a bikini and he's like, you look amazing. I want to see you. And then now you're dating her and suddenly she's not allowed to do that anymore. Like, yeah. And I, I think it's a really slippery slope of the, yeah, guys tell you what to wear and what. Like, I, yeah, I've never. No, that's not true. Remember when I almost got literally murdered for the Skims bodysuit? I will never forget that day. I was floored. You were drinking whole milk at a cafe, which was scaring the shit and out of me. And I got the wrath. I kept it up on my Instagram. Like, For wearing a Skims bodysuit. Like that's, and I've definitely been with people like the breakup. that as well. But it's like, you date this girl because she's hot and you like the way she dresses and you like the things she wears. And then you date her and now she can't wear those. Like that is just so crazy to me. I think there's something to be said that like, yes, it's important to tell people your boundaries. And I guess if that's who you are as a person, find someone who abides by that and whatever. But I've also heard a lot of stories about Jonah Hill. I have a few friends who have um, really allegedly done some really wild, wild things with him. God, I hate when that happens. I like really like want to think highly of somebody and then I just yeah. find out all these crazy stories about them. I think about the tampon story I just told. I had a friend one time tell me a s alleged story of things they allegedly did with Jonah Hill. And I was like, that is disgusting. Wait, have you heard about the guy? You know, you're going to know the guy and the people will know the guy too. Who like has girls like shit on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Should we bleep it? I want to tell you it was so bad. Yeah. No! What the fuck? 
<gasps> and it's like so widely known, like everybody knows. I didn't know that. <laughs> what the fuck? It's my favorite thing about canceled is just ruining Aaron's perspective of everything. That's so fucked. Man. Isn't that crazy? But like sometimes I feel like these guys get in these situations where they hook up with so many people that you just get exhausted of it and you're bored, and then all of a sudden you want somebody to shit on you. And I don't know what happens in between those two things. Do you know but. the actor that can only have sex and come if he has headphones on listening to his own movies? Is it? Mm. Is it? Mm. It would be. Isn't that crazy? God, I don't know. They can't be 25. Right? At all. Yeah. I'm officially too old. God, that's so crazy. I think it's like 23, actually. Um, yeah, 23 is the age cutoff. Can you tell me about this Alex Earl and Braxton thing? Like, I don't know anything um, about it. I just keep seeing it on my timeline. To my understanding, Sophia, is Sophia, Sophie, Sophie. I don't know. I watched their show. Culpa. Yeah. Okay. She was dating Braxton. Okay. They were in a really serious relationship. Like she was going to move across the country for him. Like they were talking like marriage, very serious relationship. Okay. They start having problems. This is my understanding of the story, by the way. They start having problems and they're kind of trying to work through it. And she sees him making out with somebody on social media, like at a game. And it's obviously not her. That's this is her side of the story. And so uh, it comes out later that like Braxton is dating Alex Earl. But like, I don't think Alex knew or I feel like in every situation ever that is like this, a guy's not being honest on both ends. Uh -huh. Like I've had situations like that where I think like a situation's completely over with somebody's ex so I'm yeah. engaging with this person and then it turns out not to be. Mm. So I don't know. It's kind of hard. I love Alex Earl. I also think like Sophia is the cutest. I'm like death to Broxton. Just kidding. <laughs> just joking. Men are trash. Yeah. I can't believe you just made me say all of that and now you're going to move on. I had no thoughts. I, we can cut it if you want. I just I had no thoughts towards that. Like, I think everybody in the situation now is unbothered. Yeah. And chilling. I think, so and I I think uh, Colpo wants to come on our podcast. I that'd think be crazy. that'd be interesting. I think everybody's better off. You don't want to be with anybody who doesn't want to be with you. And that's yeah. what I'm learning. Matt Reif is allegedly making $30 million on his tour with Live Nation. I, I feel like that's like a... Like that number honestly makes sense. If you, if you see like, have you seen the tour dates? It's hundreds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause he's done, he does like, I think sometimes more than one show or I, a lot of times more than one show a day, almost every single day of 2023 and 2024 was the deal, I believe. But I feel like that's what like Dave Chappelle would make or Kevin Hart would make. Yeah. But I don't think any of those comedians are touring to that extent. Like you go on a little tour, but like, this is a really crazy, like very long, extensive. Yes, two hundred. I'm a comedian shows. now. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're going on a comedy tour, Loki. Oh fuck, we ha we should cut that to the very beginning. I think. Yeah. Okay. Or no, or should we just? Fuck. Sorry. Yes. I don't know. I don't think anyone, in, any normal person, or any person who's not like 27 would tour that crazy yes, without two, like going actually insane 230 shows within i think two months or three months yeah and, and then and then i think he crazy. does like some in between too which is crazy you and i are going on a tour and we are just not making 30 million dollars oh, no. not at all but you know what um i was actually just texted by my manager to read some dates we are so excited it's going to be august september and whatever month comes after that october um, nailed it and we're not allowed to say the places yet, but we can tell you one place, which I still think is pretty exciting. I do too. We will be somewhere I've never been in my life. All of these cities are places I've never been in my life. Really? Mm -hmm. That's a um, hint. We will be in New Haven, Connecticut to do Cancelled Live on August 11th at Toad's Place. Toad's Place. So if you are anywhere near 
New Haven, Connecticut, and you want to come meet us and hug us and please um, do. Be forced to turn your phone off and let us tell you stories that are somehow ten times worse than the ones we told you today. Names, 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 names. So many at names. the live shows. So many names at the live shows and so many stories we could never, ever, ever tell on this podcast. Um, we're really excited for New Haven. So we're just August excited 11th. in general. I can't wait to tour, and hopefully one day we get a thirty million dollar touring deal. That would be fucking amazing. Um, but for now, we don't have that. But the tickets are linked below for New Haven. So we're excited. Shark Tank. I'm not into it. Oh, okay. Can I tell you why? Why? I don't like Shark Tank because I don't like feeling secondhand embarrassment. And it's the most embarrassing show of all time. Oh, I love it so much. I it, love like, it. Like, it's like American Idol. I can't watch it because I'm like, ah. When <laughs> someone has a bad pitch on Shark Tank, I could like masturbate to it. I think it's the <laughs> most. <it's, laughs> Not literally, bro. Not literally. It's just I find it. It just does something for me. I had a but vibrator cut on, catch on fire. Your vibrator caught on fire? It. I'm not kidding, Tana. It literally basically burst into flames upon being just literally turned on. Like, I was like, God, Jesus Christ, I can't catch a break. <laughs> I could see that being something you cry <laughs> over. I'm not kidding because it was like it, you, it would like it felt like one of those things like you know when the vapes were exploding in people's pockets yes I thought that was gonna happen and I was like I'm about to get the settlement of a lifetime <laughs> was it like why, why did you think it was gonna catch on fire because it just it started getting it was like I was touching a straightener I'm not kidding I set it down on my desk and I was like oh my god this is a fire hazard like I think it's gonna just like set my whole apartment did on fire did you have another one or did you have to go acoustic I I <laughs> Have you ever seen Have you ever seen that meme? It's like the girl from like Handmaid's Tale. It's like me when my vibrator won't turn on. It's have you like, seen the Or the meme? Kim Kardashian when she's like dressed yes. up in her little cottage core. Have you seen this sound on TikTok where it's just someone <laughs> It's so fucked up. I'm sorry. It's someone just like ah and it's like <laughs> Helen Keller discovering a vibrator. Can we go to jail for this? This is really bad. We had... Never mind. Every time I move, I... Um, Why are we both so far down now? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I move houses, I, um, I, I re-up my sex toys. Like, I throw them all away and I get new ones. Okay. And I don't know why I've made that, like, a thing. On the, at Ogden, when we moved, I had like a red room collection of sex toys but i was like the, putting these something out putting these into a box and like bringing them from place to place is feels like so embarrassing to me but now i've just been here with nothing and oh I'm so, so you bored. are acoustic yes yeah, so i need to I a need little to just... um tiny desk <laughs> oh god aaron get with it just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. No, I've just been a whore. Oh and yeah, I'm you've been doing it the old-fashioned way. Yes. That's uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to call pool boy pretty soon here. I'm not kidding. But I told you at the beginning, I'm bushed up right now. <laughs> Saying but, I'm bushed <laughs> up right now is crazy. First of all, you're bushed up I'm too, so don't even try up. to play that game. I was with in the me. bathroom like changing, and Lila was like, "Tina, you have a bush right now." I was like, "I know, I need to shave my puss." First of it's all, it's terrible. Wait, what were we getting at before this? I thought it was important. Oh yeah. Wait, I don't know. It like burst into flames. Oh yeah, I thought I was gonna get a settlement. I, like I was like, and it, it wouldn't turn off, so it was just getting so hot. I was like, oh my god, it's got, like, what do I do? What do you do? I just like I had to just let it die. I had to just watch it and hope it didn't explode. So you're just sitting there with it like vibrating on yeah, the table. Yeah, Mur and Murphy's like, what's going on? Murphy's it was, like, like new toy. I didn't want to put it on like fabric or anything because I didn't want it to like combust. I can't. But I should have let it happen because. God, imagine, do you remember yeah, that, um, that documentary about the girl who got the McDonald's coffee and it gave her like extreme third degree burns to the point where she had to be like hospitalized? No, but I do like that analogy. Yeah, but you don't want like a she Chernobyl a, pussy. I don't. <laughs> and I don't. I can't tell how offensive oh. exactly that is, but I think it's. I actually, be I actually had a way worse thing to say, but then I was like, I won't. Um, back to what I was saying. Oh, oh sorry. Shark tank. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. This has nothing to do with the show Shark Tank. I just have two 
two applications I've recently discovered. I'm working with one of them, maybe both of them, and I need to pitch them to you. I need to tell you about both. Okay. Because they, in my opinion, in my entire lifetime, they are the two craziest apps I've ever discovered. Okay. okay. One might still be in beta, so I don't know if it's like possible to download it yet, mm -hmm. but a friend of mine created it and it is called Flued Out. Okay. I love it already. Isabella's like, hello? Um, no. Isabella was there when um, the guy was telling us about it and I swear to God, she was like foaming at the mouth. Wait, what is it? It's like essentially all these rich men post and pe someone's going to get murdered from this. I'm not they post trips, murdered. right? I think someone was telling yes. us about this at Tao. Yes, yes, yes. They post a trip. Like a rich guy will be like, I'm going to the Hamptons. Um, Didn't this exist or from, no? No. From oh. like August 5th to August 8th. And then girls send in their profiles and apply to be flown out on the fucking trips. Slay. I would. So I'm going to the Hamptons. <laughs> Just kidding. Man. No, it's um, like, I don't know. I, wow. But I think that's going to end in murder. You think so? I think there has to be like some kind of precautions that you take. Like maybe they have to do like a little I would like, hope so. waiver situation. So that one was just like a funny little um, breadcrumb I wanted to share with you. But the next app has changed my fucking life. Okay. And I don't know if it's a good thing. No one wants to be around me anymore whenever I tell them <gasps> about it. I know what you're going to talk about. It's called Reclip, okay? And I'm very, gonna, very valuable in Turks and Caicos. Let me tell um, you. And I'm gonna turn it on right now. In order to, okay, it's on. Um, to explain to you what this app does. When you have it on, so when you have the app open and running, it is constantly recording everything that your phone can hear but it doesn't have to be on the screen right it's it can no. just it, oh, there's no, no, like no, no. fully like i'm i could just be on my little like home screen you know? okay. no one wants it to just has to be screen. like one of those tabs that's somewhere over yes there. so like i could be on twitter and just like or or my phone could just be locked right here like this like boom like and it's not open on my phone it's just like whatever and it's constantly recording on a two minute loop so it records everything for two minutes and then starts over everything for two minutes and then starts over everything for two minutes and then starts over so if someone says something and you're like, fuck, I wish I captured that. All you have to do is, and again, look at my phone. Like I am just on my little home screen, just chilling. Open up the Reclip app and, and press clip. So now check this out. Like, and it's not open on my phone. It's just like whatever. And it's constantly recording on a two minute loop. So it records that could get everything for two minutes either really on. good or really bad really quickly. I love it because we caught like we used it in Turks and literally caught the funniest like things Lila would say and stuff that were just like I cannot believe someone wasn't vlogging. But like you, I, I just did it to Jeff and he was like I'm I never want to see you again. That's <laughs> like, terrifying. Like, but I'm I told him about it obviously before doing it. I think yeah. Are there like laws against that or something? Um, I don't know. Um, but I met with the founders of it and I am working with them and oh, sorry. I want to invest. I think it's a genius idea. They were telling me a lot of sweet things. Like someone caught like their grandmother's last words on reclip or their baby's like first steps and words and shit. Oh like, my God. How cute. Like there is really cute or like p people use it for work. Like if they're in a meeting, good. it can be used for good, but I just think get, putting it in the hands of the 12 of us is like, like use it for blackmail it's hilarious my not even just not blackmail, blackmail but like oh my god you said this that was so embarrassing you told this story my I'm very first thought was like imagine you're in an argument with your boyfriend and you're like this this and this and he's like you didn't say that and you're like check this one out yes i did like that is so oh my god that would be amazing and so when the reclip app is open you know on the iphone um how like if you're on navigation like the, the time at the top is like blue. Yeah. Like the, like the time at the top. Like, oh, so it's um, like that. Like, or if you're on a FaceTime, the time at the top is green or whatever. <laughs> if you're, if your reclip is recording, it, it's orange up at the top like that. Mm -hmm. So now everyone in the friend group will just be like, are you on orange? Are you on orange? Like, that's hilarious. Like, um, Chris yeah, came over you. last night and Ari just mouthed to me across the room. Like, hilarious just, he was uh, probably just like uh, uh. 
Um, I, I think I said a whole lot of things that are really going to negatively affect me, but that's usually how this godforsaken podcast works. Um, if you want to date me, please do. <laughs> <laughs> the tampon thing was a one-time thing. The, t- the tampon thing will never, ever, ever, ever happen again. Mark my words, please. And I do not have a Chernobyl pussy. <laughs> Bye, guys. We love you.